This episode of The Cut was filmed at the Men's Grooming Lounge. Welcome back to The Cut. And today is a special, special Mother's Day edition, right? And I am using this opportunity to do something very different in this episode. It was always my intention to introduce women, females, to the cut platform. But I think this is just the best time ever. I am flanked by two <laughs> of my favorite people in the world, mm -hmm. two mothers that I see in action, and I know how much of a great job they are doing at being mothers. It is my greatest pleasure to introduce my beautiful wife, <laughs> Tammy Chin Mitchell, and my <laughs> lovely, lovely sister-in-law, Tessa and Chin Crooks. Hi. Hey. Welcome, Ooh. ladies. Oh, thank you for having us. <laughs> I feel so, so yes. We're honored. The first women to be on the court is a big deal. It's, it's a, a big deal. deal. Thank yeah. you. Thank and you I've, been, I've been saying to you, I was like, when we're going to see two women in the court? <laughs> yeah. And you're like, no, man, in time. I did not think it was going to be the two are we. <laughs> <laughs> in the future, always want to prove a point. Now we're contemplating another junction in life. We live with our decisions. It all come down to choice. It all come down to choice. Hey. I made use of my opportunity. Now I'm where I wanna be. Mother's Day was yesterday, so I'm celebrating mothers. We're celebrating mothers all the month of May, right? But I feel like today I want to ask questions. Even though I may know some of the answers, I want to represent or ask questions on behalf of people out there who want to know the backstory, how you guys started out. Even the early days in the Chin household, how that looked like as sisters growing up um, with siblings, parents, how the household is set up. But I think that's the first thing people think is just me and Tessie. No. When we are the babies of five yeah. right. children. Okay. And so we have I love the way I love the way you have to pretend like you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. No, I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be on You're behalf just you're of, just yeah, we yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um but Tessie and I are the babies of five mm -hmm. and we have an older sister and two older brothers which yes. a lot of people don't realize yes. as well and you know we grew up in a very um musical family but also a very religious yes. spiritual family yes. um mm -hmm. we grew up in the church mm -hmm. which a lot of people uh don't know as well we observe the sabbath yeah I which is hard. That's the reason why we're so creative coming about not for the fun, the yeah. Friday and the Saturday. <laughs> so Friday, yes. everything have a lock off. Friday Six o'clock, yeah, sundown. Yeah, the evening to sundown the Saturday. We weren't allowed to participate in any kind of, like little people weren't allowed to do that show, the Friday show. Or the Saturday or matinee. Or the Saturday, we weren't allowed to watch TV. So I think yeah. our saving grace was like the radio. And each other. And each other. Yeah, yeah. we got to play a lot, um, yeah. but we weren't allowed to be, you know, it was really a time for rest. Yes. And at the time it was... The, I'm about to bring it, it back. Yeah, I'm like, we need the Sabbath <laughs> back. But at the time it was what? a very hard thing for us it as was. children. Yeah. Uh, but, but at the same time, we didn't know no different. Yeah. Right. So when you grow into that, we didn't know that people were at the beach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we didn't know, why, why can't we go to the party on Saturday? It was just like... Yeah. It's, it's Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah. So would you say that that was the beginning, that was the first rehearsals mm -hmm. for you, setting the stage for you guys in the creative arts? Absolutely. Yeah, we did a lot of, you know, I mean, just being siblings and being the two little ones, because our, our siblings are much older a than us. A little older, yeah. So we got a chance to play a lot. Yeah. And, we and imagine. Would, and imagine. And, and we would put on a lot of concerts. Yes. and a Make lot up of, dances. Yeah, or play Miss World. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole um, backstory of trauma to that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really our playground. It's yeah. where we, we, we imagined the lives we would have one day. Um, Crazy. And to think that so much of that came true is, yeah. is, is unbelievable. But we go and visit each other in our apartments. Yep. Yeah. All of mm. something. And dr turn the bicycle upside down and pretend to drive. drive. Yeah. yeah. It was a lovely We journey. played outside yeah. a lot. We pretended yeah. to be mummies, all that good stuff. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of people would be surprised to know. I think people think of us in a certain light. They just think of us as, like, you know, two uptown girls. I mean, that was always, like, the view. And I think people would be surprised to get an eye into our lives as children and, and realize that, you know, we fell in that line or that category 
that we we didn't really belong up to no, it. <laughs> our, our upbringing was very different because of the yeah. way our story goes. And if I go back to even like my father's mother mm -hmm. and how she came to, her family came to be to Jamaica and then she's first generation Chinese and how, you know, what her life looked like, yeah. you know. It was an what, incredible what, humble. What yeah. was her, like, what her. was her, her livelihood, her hustle, what was her job? Many, oh, I think. Her you main know, hostel was burning making coal. coal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Making coal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Troy and partner. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how so grandma who's the customer the for, the, for the coal um, Anybody who yeah. needs yeah. coal. Anybody who needs coal. And another, I mean, she was very innovative. She yeah. was very, she was where we get our entrepreneurial spirit from, I mm -hmm. believe. And so, you know, one she of her other... She knew how to survive. I yeah. think that's, you know, when you have to survive and you have three children to look after, and addition to that as well, like it's it's just you don't think you just have to you yeah. make something, yeah, you yeah, make yeah. something. So we know? always saw her making a way out yeah. of nothing. So um, you know something that we've shared about in the past was this story of of my grandmother and the, the hose. hose. And at the time, she lived in a tenement yard, and she wanted, she dreamed about building her own home yeah. one day. And so she bought a hose for her garden because she said she was going to have a garden one day mm -hmm. that she would water, water with her hose. Mm. And so everybody... Much to the mockery. <laughs> yeah. Everybody was like, oh, where you buy a hose yeah. for? Yeah. You have garden. You have garden for, yeah, where you buy? Yeah. She was like, oh, no, all right, you know, may I buy my hose because I'm going to build my hose one day. Yeah. And, you know, she actually did build that hose one day. She built mm -hmm. two. Built mm -hmm. two, yes. And she did water her garden. And we always were told that story as a reminder of not just, you know, where we're coming from, but where you can go yeah. with vision mm -hmm. and with faith and, you know, a whole lot of hard work. I mean, Grandma Kathy was pretty, pretty impressive, too. That's our mom's mom, because she literally came over on a banana boat with a newborn. Yeah, from to England. A, from England to a place she had no idea. She used to teach children under a tree to, to make a little extra money. It was six children. I remember my mommy telling me the banana split into six. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And just her faith as well. I remember her telling a story to mommy telling me a story of grandma. There's obviously no dinner at the mm -hmm. time. And grandma said to, to mommy, Christine, go and set the table. And mommy was like, what may I set table for? Nothing mm -hmm. a day. <laughs> and she was just like, go and set the table. And sure enough, something was provided. Mm -hmm. Somebody would show up with a kindness or whatever. But she managed to do incredible things mm -hmm. also in a country that was not her own, mm -hmm. in a culture that was not her own. And I think that definitely that indomitable spirit, is mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. what we say? That mm -hmm. tenacity comes from both sides, though they look very different. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, We have very strong women in our family and it is definitely something that, you know, we got raised up under those lessons. Mm -hmm. And so we, examples. we had yeah. really wonderful examples. And Still we were do. always reminded that, you know, in some way we are actually our grandmothers and great grandmothers wildest dreams has sitting mm -hmm. here. You ever mm -hmm. heard that before? Like I love when they said that, where they true. say, we are our grandparents' true. wildest dreams. We're you know? sitting in their prayers. We are. Moving on from kids now, you are in prep school now. So what was the next step? Did you guys go to the same prep school? We did, but I, I had to, to, to break off into another school because that school was not um, a good fit for me. And I think that's where you kind of learn about comparison with siblings and how, you know, as teachers or educators, we have to be so careful not to put pressure on one sibling to be like the other yeah. academically or any other way. True. And so I think that was the best move for me was moving from the school I was at to go to St. Hughes. And that's where I kind of blossom into my own. Can I ask you, yeah. did you find your voice at this point in life? Did you I, know that singing would be a part of your life? Funnily enough, you're not going to believe me, but I knew singing was going to be part of my life since I was five. And I remember <laughs> wow. the exact moment. And really? it was when I got up. Uh, at one of mommy and daddy's rehearsals 
And I tell the story all the time. I took the mic, and I don't know why I took the mic, because Daddy was very strict about the, the, the equipment. <laughs> Still strict. <laughs> yeah. But I took that mic, and my Aunt Marie started playing, do, 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 do. And I sang, um, Stand By Me. And I remember watching my family, and I remember there was a reaction. I went, huh, OK. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Please wow. note, I did not get that reaction. Stop it. <laughs> so tell me, tell me. Them say you look good. No, 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 no. no. Let me explain. No, <laughs> Tammy has a different. So, so I had to sing. Otherwise, I would have probably been invisible because this one is. Ballerina. She, no, it's not just a ballerina. She, her personality ah. is a very big one. Mm -hmm. And it's a very interesting one because it is, yes, she is beautiful, but she has everything that you could possibly want to go with the beauty. Yeah. She's warm. She's incredibly funny. She's smart. She is gifted at just about anything she puts her hand to. So me, I have to find my little thing. I say, no, it's like a work for me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm finding as I'm, <laughs> as I'm older, of course, you know, she has inspired me to step out and do other things. And I've learned now that I'm more than just hair. True, mm. you know, but um, the, I laugh all the time that I had to be good at singing because that was the only way I would have gotten my little, <laughs> my little shine. Oh, but um, it was a very, I think, prep school, but more so little people mm. was a big part of um, our Kathy development. Levy. Kathy, Kathy Levy came into in play right there. So for both of you, both of you yes. are part of that yes. little, yes. little yeah. people. Yeah, mommy recognized it much sooner for Tessie. Tessie was, you know, very, as, as much as, as you know. Outgoing. Yeah, she Kathy was way was more very, outgoing she was than like, me. I'm going to stand back and look at you. Yeah, mm. I watched her for a whole year yeah. little people before I ever auditioned. Yeah. But that was really like, you know, a place for us to really um, explore that side and meet of ourselves. our tribe. Yeah, you yeah. Know, because we didn't know there are other kids harmonizing at home. True. And, you know, making up song and dancing. So we yeah. found our people, yeah. essentially, who we are deal. still people with now. So. Whoa. <laughs> so I'm going to bring it back to motherhood at different times in, in our conversation because I, I want to hold that as mm. the theme, right? Mm -hmm. Because we spoke about your grandmothers and mm. their resilience and how that must have taught you lessons about changing the narrative about who a woman is in this society. Mm -hmm. You can go for what you want. You can be the breadwinner. You can go for it, you know? Yeah. Um, what about Mommy Christine or Nana, who I affectionately call Nana, who is my, <laughs> uh, my children's grandmother and yes, your yes, mom? Yes. What kind of impact did her, um, you know, type of mother, motherhood, oh, wow. give you guys? And how does that shape who, the mothers that you are? I think the thing with Mommy is, is when Mom had Tammy and I, she was a completely different mom. She was very relaxed. She was in her 30s <laughs> when she had us. Yeah. So her first daughter, her yeah. first child she had when she was 19. 19. Uh, by the time she had us, she was in her 30s. So, yeah. mm. you know, by the time they are tired. Yeah, 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 <laughs> she yeah, was yeah, yeah. tired, baby. But it worked <laughs> yeah. in, in our, our favor, favor because yeah. she allowed us to, yes, we had our boundaries because mommy only had to give us a look. Yeah, or speak in a particular voice, and we knew that's far enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So we, we didn't jest with her, but she also gave us so much freedom to explore our creativity, to explore who we were, um, to explore our dreams, to have difficult conversations yeah. sometimes that I'm sure terrified her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, to just kind of be, and I said, I said this all the time, I think mom's gift to us was her, and I really mean this, like uh, it's very rare you find unconditional love. Right. Mm. Without kind of any, like the, her, her ability to love us unconditionally and without judgment. Like mm. to this day, my mom is one of those people I can tell anything to and I know she's not gonna be like, what? Yeah. Really? She's just gonna be like, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. she was cool. Yeah. Like if you can think of like, you know, the type of mother who nothing like, and she told us later on in life, and Why? she tells us no. She was mm -hmm. like, you know, my number one rule was never to be shocked at anything you said. And we did say some shocking things, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> you know, we, yeah. we, sh we, did, we live on the shock factor. Yeah, shock factor. Uh, but, but even she, with difficult things like sexuality coming into your yeah. womanhood, things like that, like, yeah. you know, I think sometimes. 
I didn't have the experience of my mommy shying away from that. She leaned she into leaned it in. mm -hmm. yeah. with us and made us know it wasn't anything to be ashamed of or yeah. it wasn't anything to be... Um, Afraid of. Afraid of. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, but she also, you know, this is the thing, you know, when she had a brand of parenting that yeah. we can't even replicate. Yeah. Like, I look at her all the time and I'm like, man, I wish I could be as soft, kind, firm. Like, she was, to me, she and is a... Yeah, and unbothered. <laughs> she's, a, she's a real, as close as we could get to maybe, um, you know, what we look at as maybe a perfect mother, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but so much so that she set the bar too high because, <laughs> but I tell you the truth, you know, I can't reach there at all. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's no, amazing. you guys are doing a great job. Thank you, but yeah. it's not... The same, and I think that's that's been the hardest thing to realize. I thought, I mean, you grow up thinking you're going to be just like your mom. No, ma'am. Good and bad. No, ma'am. You know. But what's one of the things that that you definitely emulate or try to emulate from her? Oh uh, Jesus! I definitely, with your parenting journey. For me, the big thing is to light up when the kids come in the room. Mm -hmm. Like, mommy was always you happy always to see us. You always talk about that. And it was something I heard later on and I realized that mommy did with ease. Like we'd come in the room and it was, hi, <laughs> you know? And you know, before I recognized that that was a thing, I mean, it's so easy where well, your kids mm -hmm. body at 10,000 times a day oh and you kind of just are annoyed half the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, parenting is hard and we don't hold back on sharing our own truth about the difficulty of what it means to be the mother, mm. um, you know, and the, the load that that comes with. So a simple shift that I made um, was to just try and light up every time mm. my children came in the room. Um, it, it works with husbands too. <laughs> <laughs> My number one thing that I would love to be able to emulate with my girls is to be that safe space, mm -hmm. is to be able to be that sounding board and to be part of their lives, not just in a way as mom, but for them to be able to feel like they can tell me anything and mm -hmm. to feel safe enough that they can come no matter what it is and to know, for them to know that there's nothing you can do to separate. Mm -hmm. my love for mm -hmm. you, for them to know that in their being, you know, mm -hmm. um, that's one thing I definitely, and I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm trying, but it's hard, man. It's hard, it's, it's hard. hard. Let me ask you something. You think that women are more wired, more suited for, uh, for certain roles in the household? as opposed to men? I think men. women do what they <laughs> need to do. Yaga, Yaga upset me. No. Yaga. Me, meaning that I think it has been proven that women have to step up to the plate no matter what the role is. And that is because there are so many single moms who have had to be mom, provider, and, and moms, yeah. if yes. I'm being completely honest, yeah. who mm -hmm. are not single mothers. You have to do what you have to do, and whether or not you are suited to the role, who cares? Yeah, <laughs> it has to get done. Yeah. You know, so we may not always do it to the the what society may think is to the best of our ability. But even a simple thing as we're career women, mm -hmm. you know, are you know, I, I I daydream sometimes that I could be that person who is a stay-at-home mom, which I have such admiration for because it is not an easy thing to I do that. that. <laughs> but I also, I also know that that is not my reality and that is not my, um, I don't know if I could. I think you're thinking like, you're going back to hunter-gatherer and you're thinking about, you know, the role of women as it pertains to like, you know, Years and years and years gone by, and we women hunted, always men for hunt. <laughs> well, women did hunting yes, too. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. Gen meaning, generally meaning, speaking, there will be exceptions to every absolutely. rule. Absolutely, and, and I think speaking, we are very good at multitasking. Yes. I think we're very good at at taking a lot on our plate. I think we are very good at these things, but I also think we have been reared this way. I think oh, we've been yes. raised to um, shoulder that load, and I think. Part of our, you know, story as women has always been to almost make it easier for everybody yes, else except but ourselves. Yeah. And I think we've made, you know, a really um, broad rod. rod for our own backs in, in, a, in a sense because, you know, we do want to do everything. 
Um, and I find that, you know, our generation of mothers now are finding themselves in a lot of burnout, yep. um, in a lot of guilt, a, a lot, lot of rage. No, we didn't have to say on. it at the same time. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, this is my show, and you will not come on this yeah. show and drop what <laughs> coming. But I'm still going to ask the question. I'm still going to ask the question. You guys have a lot of friends who are... Um, parents, mothers, who are mothers, and you have conversations. You talk about the triumphs and you talk about the struggles. Are moms okay out there in, in, in this day and age, and, generally And not speaking? just our friends. So it's really important that, like, you know, we, we also get a chance to speak to many women on, a, on any given day. And I find that the, the single touch point that we all can reach and immediately be relatable on is motherhood. And so, you know, I always say to people, you know, we're all in the same storm, even if we're in different boats. And so it, I think it, I think across the board, I, I, for the most part, the messaging I am getting back, and maybe it's because of where I am in my motherhood journey, is that, you know, we aren't okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, we are doing motherhood the best we can, but we are not speaking enough about how difficult it is to reckon with the mothers we are, mm -hmm. to also raise the children in front of us, not the children we, we hoped yeah. they would be or Come on with how it. they, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there is so much of like a wake up call and a reality check. And then women are very busy hiding it from each other because they want to, you know, kind of they want maintain. to meet the, 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 yeah. the status quo. <laughs> so what would you say? What what more should men can men do to to kind of change that narrative or change that perception or that reality. I think first accept that it is real. Yeah. Like I think a lot of men want to pretend like or say that, you know, oh, what you're feeling is not really how you're feeling. Like, or it's not, it's, it can't be that hard. Uh, let me do this. And I think just to be heard. Yeah. And I don't just mean by husbands, boyfriends, um, fathers. I mean by, you know, all the men in our world. You know, um, mm -hmm. I think just to be heard and to be, and, and by other women too, to just be, to just say, I see you, mm -hmm. and I it, hear it's, you. It's not a and competition. It's, yeah. it's not a measuring of what you're doing versus what I'm doing. It's exactly just what Tammy said. measure, you know. <laughs>
cross treading and stepping on each other way. too. <laughs> exactly. We, do, we don't end no, up doing no, it the way right. we, 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 no. we don't want to do it. And I think that's such a fine line to toe because I do believe that there is such a thing as stepping back to allow fathers to really find their, their brand way. of parenting mm -hmm. and their way. Mm -hmm. And that can be very hard, hard. for women mm -hmm. because we just want to do the thing and we want to get it right and we don't really want to have to figure it out. But I do agree with you. I feel like it is a fine line that mm -hmm. we have to be able to kind of step back and allow mm -hmm. you to do it your way as well, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a very good point and it's definitely But we do well need needed. you to ask. <laughs> Meaning that we do need you to offer once in a while. Right. Like True. don't wait for your, your significant other like, babe, can it? Like see, like, can I do yeah. this for you today? No, but I, right. I, I know that men's, men's um, and this is generally speaking, their their ability to <laughs> hear a picnic screaming and, yeah. and just be okay in the middle of it is very different to us. It's like, but I don't even mean just that. I mean like, can you pick up the groceries? Or I'll 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 do the drop off. Or I will, you know what I mean? Just just offer. 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 Yeah. And sometimes when we offer, we still want to do it. It's enough. all right. We're just offer. a act bad. We just act big just and bad, awful. don't listen to That's it. Awful. Yeah. But I think it's I think it's also important to mention that like the village is so important. Amen. So, you know, whether that's a mother, a mother-in-law, a grandmother, aunt, a momo. I mean, mm. may Wayne say it oh all the time, Lord. like we couldn't get to, no, no, no. to 15 years married without the support of Momo yeah. and the role that she plays in helping us to raise our children, which is such a big part of our culture here in Jamaica, mm. that there is, an, there is an elder always, um, well, for the most part, present mm -hmm. um, to help us that while we go and do what it is that, you know, the we gathering. want to do for our family. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, without that village, it becomes so much more stressful. And, and I recognize that everybody has that. But... It has been an ingredient that literally has helped this recipe to work so well mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Couldn't do without Momo. All right. I want to swing back to mm -hmm. um, the story that was being told about the evolution of the Chin sisters, right? I know a big part of you guys growing up came when you headed off to England mm -hmm. as two young girls. What age and what stage and what did that, how did that impact? who you guys are now. I think we're like 11 and 12 or 13 and 12. We get the dates Our mixed mommy, up got you. Mommy had so to like do it before I turned teens. 12. Okay. Because then she'd have to pay full price for the tickets. <laughs> As well as I remember, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going into third form, so I would have been 13 or 14, around there. And I was going into yeah. to first form. First form, so it was definitely... Um, How did that move come, even come about? Well, you know, because our, our grandmother was British, my mother had ties to England, and, mm. you know, it came at a point her in our lives where... Her family's over there. Yeah, yeah. Her, her family was there, and she, you know, was like, you know, let us try something else, something mm. new, and what an opportunity, um, you know, to be in a different country... Um, expose us to a to different expose way. expose us to other culture, another culture, and, you know, it really was a very big turning point in our lives. And I really feel mm -hmm. like it was an, I guess, you know, some, some kids go away to maybe like uh, boarding school, mm -hmm. college, you know, one day. This was like our version of it um, because we got but a chance, but it was not. It was not public school. <laughs> 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 but it was a reality check for us too. It was a massive reality check yeah. moving to another country where, you know, where we lived was predominantly, um, white, so it was yeah. really an opportunity for us to kind of um, find ourselves in a very non-diverse situation, and, mm -hmm. and who are we in and all of this? To label that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember having to fill out school forms where they asked you yeah. what you were, like, what are race? you Asian? Are you um, black? Are you white? But and I remember thinking. I don't Men know. Men don't know if it takes. Yeah. And at the time, it was an other box. You know? And other, I'm like, I'm yeah. an other? Yeah. Okay. So bizarre. Um, but it was definitely um, a really important time of our lives because yeah. I really think that it solidified us in our Jamaica nest. Mm -hmm. I really became very, yeah, we clung to that. Mm -hmm. um, and it became, you know, the part of myself I was sure of. Yeah. Um, and I kind of, almost built out from that, 
you know. Yeah. I know musically it was big for you too. It right, was, that's what I was it, was, it was, it exposed, I mean, uh, our brothers already exposed us to like a lot of alternative music, like Cranberries and Oasis and stuff, but being in England just opened up a whole different um, way of, seeing music because like they had top of the pops where you go on every week and you see these people perform and I didn't really see that mm. in Jamaica and you know it was just like amazing in that way but it was So how did you hone the the, the skill of being a performer, being a singer, being a dancer while being there? It was, was harder because mm -hmm. we didn't have that 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 perf I mean I tried with like a group like a performing arts group but it was not the same and I felt like no shade, but the training that I had got at Little People was way... Oh, so that was still the past. main thing that yeah. was the backbone yeah. to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then we head back to Jamaica now. Both of you ready to take on yeah. performing careers, <laughs> singing careers, yeah. right? Yeah. Both of you dropped hit singles in 2006. Are you? I just aim here. Well, Remember I mean, I know, I know you guys were, were, were on the come up at the mm -hmm. same time. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Yeah. But Except I, I knew I had, came to, out first. I had to do it first this time. You oh, know, because the same singing team was at top of me. If Tessie go out first, you know. Jesus. Tammy oh, Chin boy. cannot be Tessa and Chin's sister, but oh, Tessa no. and Chin can be Tammy Chin's <laughs> sister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so you're Mickey, son? No, Mr. Girl? Drop your son. Finish up school. I'll soon come back. <laughs> no, but I mean, but obviously you guys would have, you know, on a whole sibling oh. thing going on, just by virtue of being siblings. Yes, yeah. you mean but, as in but, like sibling, but, sibling rivalry? Yeah, but then, but then the, the, the industry also kind of compare yes. you know, yes. all the time. But we have been used to that. Yeah, we're but grown. did that have an impact yeah. on your relationship? I think if years? anything, it, I think something shifted yeah. for me and maybe for Sissy to where you, we realized very quickly that, hey, this stuff, isn't real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this, this yeah. is real. Yeah. So yeah. they're probably going to pit us against each other yeah. and they're going to give backhanded compliments to you to hurt me or whatever it may yeah. be. And we just have to know we is we. This is blood. Yeah. And the same songs yeah. that they were comparing, you guys wrote, wrote together. together. Yeah. So we and have helped all, each other. Exactly. To create. So we were mm -hmm. so in, in, in each other's mm -hmm. career. We were already each other's biggest fan. To this day, if you ask me for write a song with Tammy, yeah. it come easy. Yeah, it's yeah. a natural thing. Yeah, fit. she's like a, a, a she's gonna hate me for saying it, but she's a bit of my muse in that oh. way. Like I feel, no, I'm serious. Yeah. Like I've I never, that, I, like I have <laughs> never had such fun writing for somebody. Yes. Like I don't have fun writing for myself like that. Yeah. yeah. Like when it came to like, cause I could say things I couldn't necessarily yeah, yeah, say yeah. about. Like, take your time down the line to wrap my mind to the camera. <laughs> You're the, my oh, nice, yeah. nice wife. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I do remember. Trust yeah. me, I looky, do remember. Looky, hey. get the, get the so, all right. So let me ask you, since we're on the topic of writing songs, hide away. What was the difference with that one? Did you, did you know once you wrote it that this was going to be your breakout big tune? No idea. Instant I just, classic. <laughs> I just remember that it, it, it came really easy. Yeah. Hide away wrote itself. I'm not lying. Like I remember the chord. I remember finding the chords and True. just strumming and like that. And then it was a rock song at first because I was in a rock band. Mm -hmm. No, but it still yeah. have the yeah. The, the, but it the, was fully. I don't like it. It was fully like rock with the beat, with the yeah. rock guitar. No, Tessie, you have it a was fully you know? rock. Yeah. And then it, it morphed and then into when that a came to an end, I was just like, I you know, Rudy Valentino and Paul Castic really helped. To, to, to guide it to where it needed to be, to be just risky enough um, to stand out, but still rootsy enough for people to go, this is still us though, this is still familiar, yeah. you know? So, yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the next big thing for you was the voice, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. Does it feel real, like, are you still like, think to yourself, I really me go in season five of the people and vice <laughs> as a Jamaican. It's still very much like, no, like sometimes it's real, but like I have a daughter now who likes to watch it. Ah. Yeah. Zaya's obsessed with it. And I'm just like, cause I don't really. And she call her Tessa and Chin. She calls me Tessa and Chin, <laughs> not <laughs> mommy. Okay. That's Tessa and Chin. Yes. Okay. And um, it's just surreal to have been a part of something like that. And I give God thanks every day that I had the opportunity to experience that, but people come up to me all the time and they tell me what it means to them or that they just, just don't watch the voice video yeah. again. And I'm just like, wow. Yeah. I had no idea that it would have been 
like that. And I'm just, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. You know what, Minos, the test, really checked for me when she sent for me for finals night. Jesus. <laughs> we get, a, we get a ticket. Yeah, we get a yeah. ticket and we go up to <laughs> embassy and make sure I sort out and everything. of course, bro. And land in the place. And well, I remember you know, that moment. It was just like... I was so happy. I never know. Sad them something they are going half a tree. Play, yeah. Big pro job place a beat them. Can I tell you my favorite one of my favorite moments on the voice? It was coming up to season finale. I'm tired. We ain't with tired. Right? Mm -hmm. Because you have whole heap of work for though. And I come into the room and I said, Jesus Christ, me leave on the candle. <gasps> right? Because I see a candle I burn. And then I bust the car and I say, Tammy. Oh, yes. And I just <laughs> dissolved into tears because I didn't... You have to understand, Tammy Lee, our brand new baby. Mm. I, I never understood mm. what a sacrifice that must have been until becoming a mom. Mm. Yeah. And I just hugged her mm -hmm. because I was just like, you stayed? Mm -hmm. And something in her sisterly, motherly mm -hmm. instinct knew that can't and leave. I needed her. I need, I'm a baby. It's, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not even about it, had nothing to do with the voice. It had everything to do with Sissy. Yes. I got you. Yes, yes. I'm here for you. You know, and oh. And that's been a thing. I remember when I cry just thinking you know? about it now because yeah. it meant so much. I can't rock it no more And if you're ready, if you really make me so Like a bird in the streets on my shore we have been through so much together. Yes, the three amigos. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know the whole of a business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've kind of grow, grown up together, yeah. you know, yeah. in, in a uh, weird way, you know. The highs have been really high. Yeah. But when the low of them come, mm -hmm. we've had to deal with the lows mm -hmm. too. All yeah. of us individually um, yeah. have gone through really... Challenging, um, challenging moments that yeah. were very pivotal in our story. Mm -hmm. And we've all had to show up for each other in some way or another. Mm -hmm. Things that people would never even know about that we've mm -hmm. had to go through, live through. And I think our saving grace has been the love. Yeah. yeah. The love that we just always return to. It's, it's our safe space that we've created that we know we can come back to um, even when life is throwing us in some wild Directions. Hey, you know, it's something, it's, it, it, it's a lesson in unconditional love that mm. I've learned from you guys and your family where usually a lot of times, you know, man married off, you, you, you pick me, you hold them to certain standards and they, if, if, they, if they even shake or falter, a beer thing's going on, war are going on, father and I talk to son in laundry, mm. no matter what phase or stage of my life when I was on the rebuild or on the mend, your father has never mm. showed me anything, and your mother mm -hmm. have never showed me anything but love, belief, confidence in my ability to re rework, rewind, rejuvenate, yeah. come back bigger and better. And that has been such a safe space for me in those moments when I needed just support. Yeah. Because I know I have my eyes on the prize, but we're going through the the, 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 the um, valley, the valley yeah. on the way to the prize. Yeah. And I, I know this was a Mother's Day edition, but we have to talk about that the is. father that yeah. we have as well. who the steady carriage. Yeah, she, he has been our steady carriage, who allowed our mother to be the mother she was as well mm. yeah. and gave her that space and um and now is watching us in our journey and our lives. And and him called me the other day and him say, Tommy, <laughs> you know, daddy talk. <laughs> Missy, missy, one picture with you and Tess and all of the children. We can't believe so my little baby they make all them baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he's in awe of his own legacy through us yeah. and he's very aware of it. Of yeah. Um, and so, you know, he, he really taught us and we've, we've all benefited from his love and our parents' love. And I love that you said that because, you know, their love has spilled over into, onto people we love also, yeah. you know? What you're feeling is a real love. Like, Daddy really loves you. Mm -hmm. I know. Mommy really no, loves I you. I know, I know. You know, so know. It's, it's, it comes from a very honest and simple fact yeah. of yeah. that, you know? Yeah, and they're there for everything too. The highs, the lows, they are. the rebirths, the... And is the first people the to changes. come to your defense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, you know what's good about it is the fact that we can actually document this via our vlog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, yeah. some of these moments 
these intimate moments, family moments, we can now showcase. Yeah, true. And I think it's something <laughs> that everybody can kind of resonate with. Yeah. Or, yeah. From, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Or find it in their own family, you yes. know, which is amazing yes. too. Like, I think, I think it helps people to kind of see where those moments of magic happen in their mm. own families, you know? You know, it's yeah. so funny because at the very beginning, you asked what it was like growing up. <laughs> Very similar to your home. <laughs> True, yeah. alone, yeah. rambunctious. Lots of stuff happening. Yeah. Somebody a fight over this, mm -hmm. or somebody making music over here. Right. Somebody, you know, it was very a, a good, a good home. Because it's the same five yeah. kids yeah. Yeah. at different ages, just more and girls, stages. <laughs> yeah. just a little bit more girls. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about what is happening right now, current projects that that you guys are working on, obviously. Vicebox is your baby, your, yeah. your, your brand. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Vicebox and, and the, as it relates to the future and the growth of it. Mm -hmm. Vicebox is, um, I just like to call it a safe space for kids age 6 to 18 to come to hone their performing arts abilities. We started mainly with voice because that's what I know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we have grown and we... Um, it is something very dear to me because I benefited from Kathy Levy, team, Little People and Team Players Club. Right. And I think it's essential that our youth today have a space that is their own and that they are not just able to use their voice in a, a, a very obvious sense as singing and dancing, but to be heard. Mm. Yeah. I think, you know, we're seeing way too many headlines with kids. And I think people, we're forgetting that this is the generation that is going to govern us someday. But separate and apart from that, no, they are little people. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, they have beliefs, they have fears, they have dreams, they have aspirations, and they're actually quite profound. <laughs> you know, um, they're here to teach us something as well, not just to be taught. Mm. And they need that space. Yeah. And it is my greatest honor to be able to continue to help that space to grow yeah. as much as it can and to continue to strive to offer it to as many kids as mm -hmm. we can. So, yeah. What about Zaya? I know Ayla is very young, Zaya, but Zaya, I, do you see yourself Jesus. in Zaya a little bit? Zaya, I, I, I see myself in Zaya a lot, but I also see Zaya. Mm. And I, I'm gonna have a hard time holding that one back till she's six. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, wow. even at the Christmas show, like she was like, give me the mic. She's I'm so ready. comfortable oh, on does stage. that remind you of anybody? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. No, I'm sorry for you. Yeah. But sorry it for also, you. It, 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 it terrifies me in a good way also because I'm just like, you know, I don't want anybody to make you smaller mm -hmm. than you are right now because I kind of felt like the world had that effect on me where I became very and very, you know, mm -hmm. and that's okay, I like who I am, but I want her to be in her fullness and mm -hmm. to have the, the confidence to continue to be who mm -hmm. she is. And for Ayla, she is hot. Mm -hmm. On Zaya's heels, she's already very opinionated, very strong about what she wants, and she is just a sweetie mother. I love that. I yeah. love the mother that you are to your girls. Thanks. All right, so, so, so Tammy, <laughs> the ultimate multi-potentialite is, is, is at it again. Yeah. So your latest um, role as multi-potentialite is TV host. Yes. You they made like it. You're you, very good you, at it. You, you made a comment um, early on, before you even started, before the first episode. You said this could be the most mm. genius thing or the biggest <laughs> mistake. <laughs> Hindsight is 2020. Yes. You're in now. Yes, yes. A couple months well. Yes. How is it going? Undecided. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the theme of my life though, right? It's like, uh, we'll see. It could yeah. be the best thing, it could be the worst thing, but it will be a thing. Yes. Um, and I really live my life that way. Like I have no, I mean, I do have hopes and dreams and aspirations for myself, but honestly, Wayne, I have found so much joy in just being on a journey mm. and just seeing, I mean, some people think it's crazy and, but that's just the way I've always lived my life, kind of just seeing what's around the next corner. I, I love to stay curious about what's mm -hmm. happening. And you know, I'll tell you this, there's always been a way made. So I've true. always figured it out. And um, something I always remember was daddy always saying to us uh, that scripture where, you know, 
God know every blade of grass. He know every, he every, know, he know hair, every on hair on your, on your head. Amen. He man go take care of you. That's right. So just, you know, keep on your path. Keep being curious and see what happens next. And and that's literally where I am still going. I might, I'm probably going to be 90 years old. Pray, pray to God I get to 90. <laughs> going, when? I'm going to become X, Y, and Z A now. gymnast. Yeah. I, no, girl. I can, <laughs> I can hear people asking the question, so I'm going to ask it. Why did you leave music at that stage of your career? And like, what was the, the, the main thing where you never too like about the music industry? Why you stepped away? You, you know, don't have to be a long answer. Because she could. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. Well, people, I don't think people give any And don't say it's me in a comment. Yeah. Remember, say. When? Remember, Anna say. You. Yeah. When put up a fight. <laughs> he fought for her. I don't think that people, um, again, know that I've said that, like you can understand that that was just another part of my journey, another part of my story. Yeah. Um, and when, when the thing would be is when, I, when I've done something, I've done it and I don't necessarily want to do it again. She's built that Except house. for me. Except for you. Oh. Ah. You want to do me out <laughs> over and Cut. over. Well, over you and and over you. again. <laughs> do what you want as long as you Wait, do me. Say no, what you win. Want. I think this is not even PG. Wanna get me Look at her. <laughs> no, but no, I, I, I think... went off to have them fine children. You know what I'm saying? Love little bunch. You know what I'm saying? Did I make you finish your story? Did no, I make... you did it. No, 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 no. <laughs> Do it again. No, no I don't mean for cut your guard. No, continue, that's continue. it. You said all had to be said. Thank you for watching. See you next week. No, no, but 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 guys, um, I'm so happy that you guys are the first uh, ladies, female, women to to join me on this um, platform. Thank um, you for having us. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. You guys need to cut yourself some slack because I have a front row seat to see how, what kind of mothers you are and mm. you guys are doing a wonderful job. Thank you. I really love the, 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 the role that you play, the presence, the nurturing, the lessons, the guidance that you, you have for, for all our kiddies in, in our family. It's just, it's lovely to watch. Thank you. And um, I'm happy to have you guys and, and, and celebrate this uh, Mother's Day <laughs> cut edition. Yeah, special. I feel very special to be here. Trust me, because yeah. like I said, I know this is our first and maybe it won't be a last. It's a big deal to be able to share, you know, even our motherhood journey and what that mm -hmm. looks like. And like, I hope that there are some mommies out there listening today who feel maybe less alone and feel seen and heard that, you know, they're not alone on their journey either. Yeah, Amen. and of course, so can one. I leave up my mother? Happy, happy, Yay! happy, happy Mother's Day to <laughs> my mother, the, my backbone, my heartbeat, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, without you, who am I? So guys, thank you again. That was the cut. Time for cut. Mm -hmm. Happy Mother's Day! Is that good? Oh my gosh! Thank Gee. you! Thank you very oh. much. Oh, that is oh. too sweet. Tessie. Tessie. That is funny. What is it? Come on, I'm gonna need the chocolate. Hey, that's scared is tight. Wow. wow. Not a this day. is wickedness. Thank you. you know, some people are trying to lose weight. We had a yap up now and wait, but me not eat nothing. Mean. Belly. My belly. Oh, Jesus. You know, send me a praise of my belly not come through on the camera. Girl. On the mic. Woo! Happy Mother's Day to two nice. of the best moms. Thank you. Oh, this nicey. Oh, it's. Yeah. I'm gonna taste a little piece. Go on, Spike taste my blood sugar. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going for lunch? We're going for 40 lunch. We don't tell me you're 40. This is going to give me a blood sugar spike. All right, so I think mm -hmm. on that note, mm. we can now actually oh, yeah. cut. Do you want it? Oh, in the spirit, baby. In mm. the spirit. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Holy mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Don't get the spanks, you know. Mm -hmm. oh. So when you go home now and I ask you, how was the court? <laughs> every time, every time I'm going to remember, how was today? How was the court? How was the court? The Tell the me what was the most. Good. Yeah. Sure Lovely the gear conversation. Stick. Gear stick? I think they're supposed to make you lean back, oh, you know. Does. Let me see. What is this? No, sir. Oh, no. I mean, I want to know. I mean, I feel. <laughs>